Good evening, everybody. Welcome to worship at Atlanta First United Methodist Church, and Merry Christmas Eve to each and every one of you. I'm Jasmine Smothers. I'm the lead pastor, and it is my joy and my honor to welcome you to worship in this historic sanctuary. We at Atlanta First exist to worship God, to serve people, to grow together, and to engage the city of Atlanta. And we invite each and every person here to worship, serve, grow, and engage every week that um, we're here in the city. So I want to invite you to take a look at the back of your bulletin, and you'll see a Connect card there. We would love for you to fill out that card to let us know that you're here, and also let us know how you might worship, serve, grow, and engage in the days ahead. You'll be asked to put those connect cards in the offering plate near the end of the worship service. I do want to let you know that tonight's offering um, will go for a very special purpose. Many of you may have read in the newspaper or you've heard us talk about it, but Atlanta First is launching into a huge vision. Um, we're doing something so big that without God, it is bound to fail. Um, we are going to put affordable housing on Peachtree Street. And so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> amen. <laughs> And so tonight's offering will go to help um, with that vision. So we invite you to give and to give generously for God is doing a incredible and amazing things in this place. I do want to invite you back to worship in January. We are kicking off a sermon series called Focus, and we're going to see how God is calling us to focus in the new year. Let us turn our hearts and our minds toward worship this evening. Please stand for the processional hymn.
Rejoice, for God is with us, Emmanuel. In the darkness of our world shines God's holy light. Now there is reason to hope, to love, to laugh, to live. God is truly with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and loving Father, thank you for the beauty of this evening and for those that are gathered here to worship you in spirit and in truth. May your Holy Spirit fill each one as we recall and remember and celebrate the birth of our Lord this wonderful evening together. Now be with us in worship. May your holy name be praised in thought, in word, in song, in prayer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. As we continue in worship this evening, we celebrate the lighting of the Christ candle. The Christ candle is lit this evening after we have lit four Advent candles each week. Advent means coming or visit. It means that we have been waiting and expecting the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And today, we celebrate that the baby is born again in Bethlehem. So uh, my family joins me tonight. Uh, I want to thank you all for your prayers over this year. We are down one tonight, but he is with us um, in the heavenly choir. And uh, so tonight we light this Christ candle as we know the joy that comes in Jesus Christ. Today is Christmas Eve. Today we light three purple candles and the pink one. We also light the center white candle tonight. The first Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of hope. The second Sunday, we lit the candle of love. The third the Sunday, we lit the candle of joy. The fourth Sunday we lit the candle of peace. Today, we also light the center candle. This candle represents Jesus. When we light this candle, we remember Jesus' birth. Our waiting has ended. Christmas is here. Can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah. Oh, y'all don't sound convincing. <laughs> Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> our waiting, our anticipation, our journey has not been in vain. The Christ child has come. The light of the Advent candles has guided us closer to our Savior. Joy, Joy to, to the, the world. world. The Lord has come, our waiting is over, our journey has brought us to Jesus. When we look at the Christ candle, we remember that God sent Jesus to give hope, peace, joy, and love to all people. Outside of Bethlehem, the shepherds saw a great light and heard the voices of the angels. They traveled to the manger and saw the baby Jesus. Far away from Bethlehem, wise men saw a star in the sky. They followed the star and were filled with joy when they found Jesus. We re they remind us that the gift of Jesus was not just for the people in one place, but for all people. It's amazing to think of these persistent travelers who were determined to find Jesus. They traveled with hope and faith in the promise that they would find the new king. Who are the people in our world who need to know of God's promises? What are our hopes on this Christmas day for our world? 
How can we help people remember God's promises after Christmas Day is all over? How can we continue to grow closer to Emmanuel, God with us? Over these next few hours, as we celebrate Christmas and the birth of our Savior, name one thing you are willing to do in the days of following Christmas that will help you and others remember God's promises. As we light this Christ candle, let us always intentionally journey closer to God. Let us praise God, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Friends, let us praise together. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. You can say hallelujah again. <laughs>
Old Testament lesson comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, beginning with the second verse. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
I hope that you've come tonight to celebrate the King. And as we celebrate, please stand for the reading of the gospel lesson this evening. From the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, beginning in the first verse. I'm reading from the New King James Version tonight. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same county shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem. And see this thing which is come to pass, and which the Lord hath made to us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. This Advent season, we have been exploring what it means that objects in mirror are closer than they appear. And we're learning that while the objects in the mirror keep changing, that it does not mean that they are not as close to us 
as our breath. The songwriters have been teaching us the gospel lesson through the song, Do You Hear What I Hear? Do you remember that song? It's an old carol that was intended to be a song, a call for peace during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And it tells us the story of Jesus. You can find the words to these lyrics on page seven. Let's sing this old familiar song together. prophet Isaiah teaches us that this child who will bring us goodness and light has come. And the people who were in darkness, the people who lived in darkness, the people who had a hard time finding their way forward because their world was so dark, have now seen a great light. Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, thank you for the gift of this time of worship. Thank you for your son, the Christ child, O oh God. Thank you for gathering us in this place one more Christmas Eve. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in us and through us and among us. Blow a fresh wind and a fresh fire in this place so that we might know that we know that we know that we are in your presence, O oh God. So take this, your servant, and hide her behind that old rugged cross so that everything that is seen and everything that is heard comes straight from you, O oh God. 
This is your servant's prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. On Twitter a few weeks ago, (laughs) Pastor Walter, there was a quote that struck me and has stuck with me. And over and over and over again, every day, it just keeps popping up. It won't go away. The quote says, fear is a lousy leader. Say that with me. Fear is a lousy leader. And I had to stop and wonder, why is it that this quote keeps following me around? Why does the quote keep standing out and jumping out and encountering me over and over and over again? Well, maybe it's because we are a people who live in fear. Fear of the future. Fear of change, fear of the other, fear consumes American society. We fear what we don't know. We fear what we can't see. We fear that we will not have enough. We fear that someone might harm us or steal from us. We fear anything and anyone that is different from our norm. Sometimes we even fear what is right in front of us. We live in fear. And whether we want to call it fear or not, it is here. Sometimes we call it conviction. Sometimes we even call it tradition. Sometimes we call it belief. Sometimes we call it religion. And sometimes... We even call it God. Fear is a lousy leader. Yet the truth of the matter is that when fear drives our lives, we become rigid and cold and protectionist and detached and angry and frankly, unchristian. Fear not. Fear is not new. Fear has been in our society since the beginning of time. The beloved people of God have always lived in fear of something. Adam and Eve feared that they didn't what they didn't know. They tried to remedy their fear by picking off the tree so that they would know all the things. The Israelites They tried to turn back after escaping slavery because the evil that they knew in bondage must be better than the fear of starving in the wilderness. And even the cousin of Jesus, John the baptizer, was beheaded because people feared his power in the world. If you read the newspaper, or watch the nightly news, or even the daily show, fear rules our decisions. It rules our leaders, it rules our governments, it rules our churches, it rules how we treat our neighbors and how we ourselves behave day in and day out. But the good news of Christmas, the good news of Christmas, the good news of Christmas is that every time God shows up, every time a messenger of the Lord shows up, Every single time we hear from God in the Christmas stories over and over and over again, the first word is always fear not. 
<laughs> Maybe that doesn't mean anything to you tonight, but the first word that God tells God's people when he shows up is do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I am with you. I try not to be scared of much. I, I, I actually pride myself on not being scared of much. I, I think that it makes me strong, very strong. Sometimes it makes me plastic. <laughs> but you know, when I started to drive, and I had to learn how to use a mirror like this, it scared the bejesus out of me. Let me tell you, it scared me so much that I would freeze up so that I could check my mirrors. Like I was walking across the street with Officer Friendly, don't you remember? Stop, look all the ways, and then go. Well, guess what? That rule doesn't work in a car. You've got to keep moving. You've got to keep driving. You must keep pushing. You must keep turning. You must keep moving or else someone will slam into you. In those days, there was a lot of drama. This virgin, Mary, supposedly was pregnant with the Holy Spirit's child, and her betrothed and beloved fiancé, Joseph, didn't bring her up on charges, and she's just walking around all willy-nilly, very pregnant, and just going against the grain in the society. She's breaking all the rules. And then... Because society feared that a child that might be born might be called a savior. We must look for him and hunt him down. So we're going to count everybody. So Mary and Joseph, they set out on a trip, on a journey where the mirrors would have been very important if they had them in their day. They went to be counted. And just like for many people in our society today, there was no place for them to rest. There was no place for them to rest because of fear. <laughs> People feared that these strangers might mess up their home. People feared that this very pregnant Mary might have a baby and destroy their sense of holiness in their place because she would have been unclean. People feared who they did not know. And their fear caused them to miss out on witnessing a miracle. The birth of the Messiah, wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace. They missed it because of their fear. How's your mirror? Is it working? Is it clean? Can you see all the things? Or is it clouded with fear? Clouded with judgment? Clouded with religion? Cloud it with grief. Cloud it with pain. Listen. 
Listen to what I say. But don't just listen to what I say. Listen to what the angels are saying. And, and, and listen to what God is saying. <laughs> There is no more darkness, oh, you people who have walked in fear and in darkness. There is no more of that. No need to fear. No need to drag your blanket around like Linus. No need to shut down and be afraid. No need to push people away. No need to live as if we're dead. people, the people who walked in darkness, they have seen a great light because light, it destroys fear. And, and when light destroys fear, joy breaks out. And, and when joy breaks out, Heavy burdens disappear. And when heavy burdens disappear, peace breaks out. And when peace breaks out, no one can be held hostage by life. And, and when people are free, love breaks out. And when love breaks out, the light that destroys the darkness gets brighter and 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 all of a sudden everybody's world has light and all of a sudden fear is demolished and all of a sudden barriers are broken down and all of a sudden God's people experience abundant life. Light destroys fear. So listen, listen to what the angels say. Listen to what the shepherds say. Can you hear the baby? Maybe not just yet, but I bet you can hear the pangs of birth the joyous screams <laughs> that when this is over, <laughs> when labor is over, the light of the world has come and has come for you and for me. You might want to check your mirrors there may be some light there. And if there's some light there, you can drop off whatever you brought in here. And if there's some light there, you can share that light with somebody else, even if they scare you. For Jesus, the Savior, the child sleeping in the night brings us goodness, goodness, and light. No need to fear. No need to worry. No need to feel hopeless. Are you really hearing this this evening? There is no need to worry anymore. There is no need to doubt anymore. 
There is no need to try to spin your wheels and figure it all out. <laughs> there is no need for the gnashing of teeth. There is no need for the fighting. There is no need for despair. There's not even any need for grief tonight. Oh, can you hear the angels say, fear not? His name is Emmanuel. <laughs> that means God with us. And, and maybe that doesn't quite mean anything to you, but let me tell you what God with us means. <laughs> it means that when somebody dies that you love and, and, and you can't put one foot in front of another, God with us means... <laughs> that all of a sudden your feet might start moving by themselves. <laughs> and you might have to move a little bit. And, and God with us means that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not. Ooh. God with us means that when we are sick and the doctor says it's over, <laughs> you go ask Marley Franklin over there. She's a cancer survivor. <laughs> That's a miracle. So let's get really honest with ourselves. What is it that we fear? Get really, really honest. Because I told you sometimes fear doesn't quite look like fear. So you might have to dig a little. Come on, Jarvis. You, you might have to wait a little. But get your fear where you can see it. Can you taste it? Can you hold it? Now let it go. Because you are people of the light. And because you know light, there is no darkness. And because there is no darkness, there is no fear. Jesus, the light of the world. Come on and sing it with me. Walk in the light. Stand to your feet. Beauty. Holy Ghost, we pray. Amen. Our invitation tonight, you may be seated. Our invitation tonight is to Christ's table. The table where we can literally put down our fear and walk away without all the heavy burdens so that we can shed the light of Christ with the world. Pastor Walter, will you lead us? 
as we come to Christ's table, some instruction might be helpful. As soon as Pastor Jasmine invites us to come forward, if you'll come and stand and, or kneel uh, at the altar rail, a server will come. If you'll cup your hands, a server will come and place the wafer in your hand, and then I'll be followed by the cup. And if you'll wait until Pastor Jasmine gives us instruction, we'll take it together as the family of God. If you need gluten-free product, if you'll tell your server, we will have that for you. And if you need to be served in your pews, if you will tell the usher, they'll be glad to notify us so that we can do that as well. This is Christ's table. It's not a United Methodist table. You don't have to be a member here to come and partake as we commune together. I invite you to turn to page 5 in your bulletin and hear the invitation to Christ's holy meal. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us offer our silent prayers to God. Hear the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained us steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. You loved the world so much you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. As the angels sang glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth, so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room. So Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of a woman, on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, that he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, 
eat. This is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Near the end of his life, Jesus went to have an ordinary meal with his 12 closest friends. I like to call them his 12 misfits, the disciples. And they went to have an ordinary meal, just like we have come for an ordinary worship service. And the meal turned extraordinary. And it became a sign for each and every one of us that God is Emmanuel with us. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to you, O oh God, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us, on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You will be invited to the table by an usher. Please follow their directions. Come with your hands in the sign of the cross because this is a gift. You can't do anything to earn it and you can't do anything to unearn it. <laughs> so come and receive this gift of God that is for each of us tonight. Gluten-free elements are available to you. You will come and you will kneel. We will, it's, I'll say a blessing over you, and then you'll return to your seats. If you would like, if you need it to be served in your seat, please let us know, and a, someone will come and serve you. The table is set. The invitation has been made. Come and feast at Christ's table.
the light he also increased our joy so take and eat and take and drink and remember that you are the recipient of the gift of joy now rise and go in peace wafer remember that you too are a light in this world and as you drink this juice remember that Jesus loves you so much that there is nothing that can happen that can separate you from Emmanuel God with us rise and go in peace
time we have Christmas, it reminds us that when we look at a child, that we're supposed to remember light and joy and peace because that's what the Christ child brings us. So as you eat this bread and you drink this juice, remember that you bring so much light to share with others. Take and eat. Take and drink. And rise and go in peace. The gospel writer reminds us that this good news of Jesus' birth was not just for the people that were there, but was for all people for all time. So take and eat this bread and take and drink this juice and remember the joy that Jesus brings for you. Rise and go in peace.
When the shepherds heard the news of Jesus, they didn't just go home and be quiet. They went out and they were praising and glorifying God and telling everybody about the greatest gift that had ever been given. So as you take this bread and you eat it, and as you drink this juice, remember that you have a story to tell to everyone you come in contact with. The story of how darkness is gone and how now all you can do is praise the Lord. So rise and go in peace. As our servers continue to serve our servants all over the building, did you know that there are people all over this building that are making this worship service happen for you tonight? Let's thank them. <laughs> we also want to give thanks for this fantastic choir and for our guest organist tonight, Mr. Jarvis Wilson. And we ask that you continue in prayer for our um, director of music and worship, Mr. Christopher Bryant, who is with his family. He funeralized his aunt yesterday. So we want to continue to, to pray with them. It is time to give. It is time. We have received a gift from God, and now we have the opportunity to say thank you and to return generously unto God what God has entrusted to us. You can give through Cash App, online, or in the offering plates tonight. And remember that this offering goes to helping the Atlanta First community provide affordable housing on Peachtree Street in the years to come. Ushers, won't you come?
Won't you sit with his name? Won't you trust in his name? Won't you love on his name? Call on his name. Call on his name. Oh, from the baby he was born to save your soul, save you from darkness, and bring you into light. Somebody say Jesus. It is our tradition at Atlanta First and the tradition of Christians all over the world to end our Christmas Eve services with the lighting of the candles. These candles and the light symbolize for each and every one of us that the light that Jesus brings into the world is carried through us to everyone that we encounter. So we will spread this light. Come on, Pastor Walter, we'll do this together. We'll spread it to you so that you can spread it to everyone else. The peace of God be with you. Peace of God be with you. Till he appeared and the soul. 
felt its worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn for
It was a night that brought great joy and great light and great peace and great hope and great love to all the world. So go from this place, but not from the presence of God. And listen to what I say. Do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear because Emmanuel is here. God is with us. And hope and joy and peace and love are closer than they appear. Now to the one who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the Most High God, be all honor, glory, and praise now and forever. And the people sang, 